In one of my other videos I was explaining that um, I'm changing over from ASU lock sound decoders to the Zimo decoders with um, Digitrain's Class 37 multi-drive sound files. Um, now because I'm changing over I need to change the speakers as well. With the lock sound decoders I was using 100 ohm speakers um, and now with the Zimo I'm using 8 ohm speakers so as I say new speakers have to be fitted along with the decoder. Um, now you can see the speakers there. Um, I've got the, sh the, the small chassis speaker here and the bass reflex speaker here. Now I'm going to fit both the speakers but I'm going to concentrate mainly on the bass reflex speaker um, simply because the chassis speaker here is a lot easier to fit. Um, it's just a case of soldering the wires up to the printed circuit board um, and fixing the speaker in place on the chassis with a little bit of blue tack after the bass reflex speaker wire has been wired to the back of this speaker here. So as I say I'll just be concentrating on the um, the bass reflex speaker for now. Anyway the locomotive that we're going to fit the bass reflex speaker to is the uh, Bachmann Limited Edition Class 37 you can see here this is 37003. This is the um, the logo that was made in conjunction with the Class 37 group um, for the, uh, the, the the Class 37 Preservation Society. Um, anyway, these are the fuel tanks here where the um, the, the bass reflex speaker is going to be fitted to. Um, and There's a couple of variations of Bachmann Class 37. Um, the newer models are, I think the, the newer models tend to have these um, switches fitted on the underside of the fuel tanks. Now the switches are to control the carb lighting and the directional lighting on the locomotive. Now since the Bachmann uh, since the base reflex speaker rather takes up quite a lot of space on the bottom of the fuel tanks you can see that it wouldn't be possible to use the switches anymore which doesn't really matter um, as we're going to be using DCC anyway. Um, the switches will be taken out and discarded, they won't be needed anymore and the lighting features will be controlled by the, um, the DCC handset. Right, the first thing we need to do before we can do anything is to get the body off. Um, now normally there's six body fixing screws on these locomotives which I'll show you in a second. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the logo into this Pico service and cradle here which you've seen on other videos that I've done. It's a really handy thing for holding your logo in place while you're working on it. it saves a lot of damage to any paintwork or whatever. Um, if you're going to fit a base reflex speaker or do any, any work like that it's obviously better to do it before the logo has been weathered. That way um, when you're putting the logo in and out the service and cradle it won't get the um, your weathering work won't get damaged with the uh, the scuffing of the body inside of here and also there's less chance of any buffer beam detail or anything getting snapped off or damaged if you do any work like this first. So anyway we'll put the logo in the cradle um, and as I say there's, um, there's six body fixing screws and I'll show you where those are. Um, firstly you've got two at the front here um, I don't know if you can zoom in and see there's one there, there's one at the other side. Now there's normally one in there and there's another one in here and then you've got the other two on the other end there. Now since I've been running the logo in I haven't bothered fitting the two centre ones back in so there's only the um, the two screws on each end to remove which we'll go ahead and do that now. So I'll just get some gear to do that and I'll take the first screw out. I always use a pair of um, diagonal uh, sorry, needle nose pliers for to get a hold of the screws once I've loosened them up because I tend to um, I tend to drop them uh, and can't find them anymore. As I say, I, I think my finger ends is a little bit too big and for this sort of thing. There's two out. And I'll just flip the logo around. Fitting the base reflex speaker itself is not too bad of a job. Um, there's a fair bit of dismantling to do, um, so obviously you've got you've got a little bit of reassembly to do when it's um, when the speaker's fitted. But it's it, it's pretty straightforward. It's not too hard to do, as, as you'll see as we'll as we'll go on. Yeah. Um, this is this will be actually the seventh base reflex speaker that I fitted to one of these locomotives now. So I'm quite getting used to doing it. Um, the first time I tried to do it, I was making all kinds of mistakes with it. I just, uh, you know, I was I was taking things apart that I didn't need to take apart, and not taking things apart that I should have took apart. But as I say, through um, 
doing a lot more of them. I've getting getting used to doing them. I can get them done a lot quicker now. Right, as you can see, we've got the body off here now. Um, the next thing we need to do before we do anything is to remove the decoder itself. We don't want any damage done to that at all. Um, you know, whether we're, if, when we're using a soldering iron, we don't want anything damaged by heat or anything like that or caught with any other tools. So what we'll do is we'll remove the decoder. It just simply pulls off the pins, which you can see there. And we'll just set that to one side so that's out of the way safe. This piece of black insulating tape, incidentally, I put that on. Um, I've noticed on some of my other Class 37s, when the decoder's in place, it sits quite close to the other um, components on the printed circuit board. And I was worried in case if something if it t drops a little bit more that it may short out or something like that. So I thought, well, I'll put this little bit of um, insulating tape on there. And at least when the decoder's on, it can't interfere with anything else. Right, what we need to do now is um, we need to uh, think about removing the bogies and unsoldering these connections here. Um, what you have on the logo is here you can see you've got this plastic sub frame um, or sub chassis assembly. Now that's obviously the part where the tanks are so this needs to come off the logo. So in order to do that we need to remove the bogies um, first um, and take the drive shafts out and that which we'll, um, we'll go ahead and do. But also as I say we need to um, unsolder these connections here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug my soldering iron in and the time that's heating up will start and take the bogey fixing screws out which there's only two of those you can see there there's one there and there's one at the other end here so you've only got the two of those to think of so we'll take those out and just set that aside and we'll spin it round take the other one out and um, there's a part a little bit further on in the video what I'll tell you about um, the first time I tried to fit one um, one of these uh, base reflex, reflex speakers into the tank, um, I decided to leave the bogies on um, and I sort of had them dangling by the wires and by the time I had got all the work done and come to reassemble it, that was, um, that was one or two of the, um, the wires had become detached from the bogies and I had to solder those back on again. So I thought, well, in future what I'll do is I'll just remove the bogies um, for what it takes. It's, it's not too difficult to do. Right. We've got the bogies unscrewed, so what we need to do now is we need to unscrew the, the PC board, which we'll do now, which is only three screws. Again, set them to one side. You've got one screw in the centre there, and you've got a screw here, and you've got a screw on the other side. Now, some of the printed circuit boards, I think, on the Class 37s are fixed differently. I'm not 100% I'm not sure now, but uh, as I say, there'll only be two or three screws anyway. Right, that's the printed circuit board loose. So what we need to do now is we need to unsolder the wires where the bogies contact to. Now there's two wires, there's a red and a black, which you can, I don't know if you can pick out on the camera there. You've got the black one there and you've got the red one there. Um, and the same at this end here for this bogey. So what we need to do is we need to detach those with the soldering iron, which is just a case of um, softening up the solder and then just pulling the wire out. And we'll just remove that little bit of tape for now. Now you can see on here... Um, this type of printed circuit board has got these little black plastic caps on here and what happens is when they make the class 37s they put the wires through the printed circuit board and they just bend the wire over the contact and then push this plastic cap on for to keep the wire in place. Now what sometimes happens is the wire can become loose so you'll, you'll, the logo starts to run a little bit erratically and jerky. Um, I did a video not so long back on that showing how to fix that, just how to put a little bit of solder on there, you can see there, which makes the um, the wires more permanently fixed. So if you've got like a, um, a jerky running class 37, if you solder those contacts there where the wires come through, that may well sort out the problem for you. Right, I'm just trying to find out which one the other one is, which is this one here. And this one here, we need to take those off because as I say we've got we've got the four wires to disconnect. Right, the soldering iron should be hot enough now, hopefully. Which it is. All right, so what we need to do is just get a hold of the black wire there, and just gently pull on it and soften the solder at the same time. And there's one off. There's the black wire off. I just need to turn it round. I'm trying to do all this and try and keep it in shot at the same time. There's the red one off. That's one bogey we can detach. And then just go to the go to the appropriate wires on the other side. 
can just get a hold of them and a little bit fiddly to get a hold of at first but uh, once you get a hold of them it's okay. And when you come to reassemble this you can't get mixed up with the wires because um, the wires that you've detached on the on the printed circuit board well these little tags here will be the only ones without wires so you know that that's where the wires have to go to and detach that one there right that's the um, that's the bogies unsoldered from the um, the printed circuit board so what, what I normally do now is I always make a note of which wires go to where because I always try to reassemble the logo exactly the same way as it came apart um, so as you can see here the red wire is the red wires is on this side of the chassis and the same with this one obviously so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of masking tape on which I'll just tear, tear off there now and it's got a little R I just wrote on with a biro and I'm just going to stick that on that side there so when I come to reassemble the logo I know that the red wires go to this side of the printed circuit board and they don't get crossed over because obviously if they get if they get attached the uh, the wrong way it'll cause problems okay so what we'll do now is we'll remove the bogies which is just a case of gently pulling the bogie down and you can see the drive shaft comes out with it there just leave the drive shaft in so you don't get mixed up with it and just take the bogie out the wires just pull through the holes in, in the top of the chassis there and then just do the same with this one exactly the same with that one the wires on this one is a little bit longer because they've got a little bit further to go to reach the printed circuit board so we'll just set those aside to one side so they can't get damaged and again what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little um, if I can find me by row which I've got here I'm just going to put a little mark on here and you can just get it right just a little cross or a little just a little mark like that and I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape on the um, one of the bogies that I've took out from the, the bogey from that end rather which I'll just stick that on there and then I know that that's the bogey for that side right what I'm going to do now is since we've detached the wires from the printed circuit board I'm going to reattach the circuit board I'm going to screw it back into place don't worry about the wires too much because we can tidy them up when we're done right a magnetic screwdriver's handy for these as they're, they're quite fiddly to get into uh, to get into the holes rather That doesn't go on in, it is there, that's it there. I thought that one wasn't going in. And then we'll just put the other two in. There's the second one going in. And we've got one more to put in. When you're screwing the um, the printed circuit board back into place, as you're doing it, always make sure that you haven't got any wires trapped or crushed up against anything because it's dead easy for to split the wires. They're not um, they're not the thickest of wire, <clears throat> and you could end up with a wire possibly chafed and shortened out against the body there, which will cause you no end of problems. Right. So a quick recap on what we've done. I took the body off, took the decoder off, we've unsoldered the, um, the, both bogies from the printed circuit board and took the bogies off, so that's what we're left with now. What we need to do now is we need to remove this plastic assembly here. Um, now before we can do that, there's some other soldered wires that we need to remove here, is these three wires from each end here. Now these are the wires that control the um, your directional lights on your class 37 um, at each end, you've got the same at each end. Um, I can pretty much remember which way these wires go but um, when you're not used to doing them it's always better to make you know if you draw a little diagram of, of which wire goes where and then that'll um, that'll keep you right. Um, now I'm just going to wait for the uh, the soldering iron to heat up again. I should have left it on before but I've got a habit of switching it off in case it burns out. Um, so I'll just uh, give that a couple of seconds that should be pretty much heated up there now which I'll just check it which it's yeah it's getting there slowly. I'll just give it another couple of minutes. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention was um, with the body here. When you fit the chassis speaker, the chassis speaker is going to be fitted here. Um, now that's simply just pushed into place, fitted into place with some blue tack, um, which uh, that will go there like that. And it's sort of, as I say, it's fitted in place with blue tack. Now it's better if to remove the fan from the Class 37. Um, it tends to let a lot more sound out. You'd be surprised 
it's just how much sound that that fan uh, keeps in sort of thing. So what I'll do is I'll get the screwdriver and we'll move, remove that while we're waiting for the soldering iron to um, heat up. It's dead easy to remove. You've got two screws here. Um, I've tried fitting the, um, the chassis speaker to the underside there, the underside of that there, which is what that piece of plastic's for. Um, but you can't, I couldn't get the body back on anyway. So, um, and it was about the same time I was trying to do that, I read on our um, web or one of the uh, model railway forum sites that um, a lot of the guys they tend to just remove the fan which there's the assembly there that's the fan assembly took out there so you can just put that to one side um, and also the screws that hold that in place and you can see there that's that the fans removed there now which will that'll be a lot better for letting the sound out right we're going to unsolder these now um, we got the soldering iron and we'll just take a hold of that one first which is a yellow wire which we'll just just simply remove that there. Now if you get the, the uh, screwdriver just to lift the wire up just to get a hold of it. Just so we can pull on it slightly. That's that one off. And we'll do the same with the red. And there we are, that's, that's one end detached. And we'll just need to do the same here with these three wires. As I say, if you're not sure what you're doing with these wires, it's, it's best to make a diagram of it. Um, and that way, when you come to put it back together, it'll go back together correctly the first time. There's nothing worse than, if you're not sure what you do, put the wires back together and sort of build the logo back up, put it on the track and you kind of get the lights to work or they don't work as they should work. So it's always better to make a diagram. And we'll just unsolder this one. There we go. And this one. There we go. That's the wires detached there now. So we'll go ahead and remove the um, this plastic subframe type chassis thing here. Now that's held on by four screws, which I'll show you. Um, there's the screws there. We've got one, two, three, four. Now this chassis assembly unit can only be fitted on one way. Um, although the screws are the same size, the plastic there's like a little plastic sleeve fits inside the metal part here. Um, and one end's bigger than the other, so it can only go on one way, which I'll show you when I take it apart. Right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll remove the, uh, the screws for the chassis. As you can see the first one coming out there. This is, I would say, this is the the worst part of the job um, to fit the base reflex speaker. It's it's the dismantling that has to be done in order to be able to get to this part here to get it off um, to where you know to uh, to be able to cut it out to cut the bottom out to fit the speaker in place. Um, this is this this is what takes the time, and I think it's more time than anything else. It's it's not really hard to do. Um, having a decent amount, a decent set of tools helps as well. Right. That's the four screws removed there, so you can just go ahead and just take this off now. You have to be careful with the wires because some of the, the lighting wires, as you can see, is they get looped through, um, there's little clips there, and they get looped through there. You have to be careful that when you pull them, you don't disturb them in any way. And what you've got to do is just gently, very gently, pull the chassis down like that. Till it exposes the... Um, till it exposes this weight here. Now this weight has to come out. Um, we'll not be using the weight anymore and also you can see the switches in the bottom there, they have to come out also because all this material here has to be removed. I mean this is the way I do it. Um, what, a lot of, what a lot of guys do is they simply just drill a series of holes in the bottom here for to let the sound out. But I prefer to remove the whole section out the bottom there. I think it lets a lot more sound out. Um, which you know that's just the way I do it anyway which is the way I'm going to show you on here anyway anyway um, what I'll have to do is I'll have to um, the, the, the weight's held in with two screws here so we'll remove the screws I'll try and get a hold of them with my fingers which I can't oh, 
hopefully they'll just shake out. And that one's come out. Right, there's the other screw there. So you can see now we've removed both the screws from the um, from the weight here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take this weight out. Um, well what I'll do is I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes with the weight removed, um, simply because it's a little bit um, it's a little bit awkward to get out. Sometimes you've got to sort of tug at it from you know different ends and that and try and sort of prise it out. So um, it would waste a little bit too much time on the camera probably. So I'll come back in a couple of minutes anyway with the weight removed. Right, as you can see, we've got the weight removed from the sub chassis here, um, and I've unscrewed the switches here from the weight. Um, the switches screw into the weight here, you can see the little fittings there, they're just fitted by two little small screws. So you just unscrew the switches from there. Um, as I was saying, we won't be needing the switches anymore, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just cut the switches away from the main wire in here. Um, I'll just use some diagonal cutters. I'm going to cut. There we are, that's cutting there now. What I normally do with the switches is I normally leave a little bit of wire on. Um, I don't cut the wires off right down to the shoulder parts, um, just in case you need to refit them again, then it's just a case of joining the wires up. Um, but as I say, the switches aren't used anymore now, um, as the lighting features will be controlled by the, the DCC handset, so we'll just set them aside to one side. Right. This is the section here that we need to cut out, um, or I do anyway. As I say, some people just drill a series of holes in the bottom of the tanks to let the sound out, but I prefer to remove the whole thing. I think it sounds a, a little bit better than just having the holes in. But before we do that, um, what I want to do is I need to sort these wires out now, what the switches were attached to. Um, and the way that I normally do that is... I used to join the wires back up again with a little heat, a little bit of heat shrink tubing but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wires out and I'm just going to solder a sort of a jumper thing, a piece of wire across there just to the contact so that the, um, they're permanently, con uh, permanently wired up. Right, I'll just take the wires out there now. There's only the, there's, there's three wires per switch, uh, per side of switch rather, so there's six wires in total. So I'll just pull that out, excuse my hands. Alright, I'll just get that side out. And then I'll just take this, do the same on the other side, which I'll flip that round and let you see. When you come to do this, if you come to do it the same way as that I've done it, the, um, the two green wires here, these have to be joined together. Um, whereas the yellow wires... They, they get joined together but on the same sides whereas the green wires is on opposite sides they have to be joined together which you'll see what I mean as I, as I come to do that and I'll just get these other two yellow wires out again excuse my hands right those are all the wires out there that we need to um, that we need to join up again which we'll do that in a second once I get them sorted out Maybe a good idea at this point to um, refit the, the circuit board back onto its uh, mountains just to stop any unnecessary tension on any of the other wires, which I'll do now. I'll just get my screwdriver again. Right, as I say, there's one screw goes into the centre of the circuit board, I and mean, I can get it to go into the hole that is. Right, there's the centre one in. Not too tight. Just gently nip them up for now because we may have to remove it again. It just depends how we'll go with it. And there's one the end ones in. Always remember to check that none of the cables are nipped because if you chafe one of the cables, as I say, once you start and uh, once you apply the power to the logo, you'll have all kinds of problems with it shorting out. Okay. So there's the um this is the uh, the directional light wires on the end, so we're not worried about those at the moment. All we want to concentrate on for now is the um, is the wires that did originally go down to the um, the switches. And I'm just going to tuck that wire back under there for now. That wire goes to the motor. Right. So what we need to do first of all is, as I say, rather than join the wires up like this. We'll just cut a length of wire off this one and just join it straight onto that one there and then that'll, that'll be that one permanently coupled. So what I'll do is, while we're doing that, 
I'll, um, I'll just get the solder iron to heat up and I just want to double check these connections as well while I'm busy because if there's any signs of those coming loose then I can just put a little bit of solder on as well at the same time while I'm busy. Just while I'm waiting for the solder iron to heat up, um, to cut out this part of the, uh, the bottom of the fuel tanks um, I tried using a razor saw on the very first one that I did and it was really quite difficult for to get you know to remove all the necessary necessary material out so uh, what I would advise using is a, um, a rotary type tool such as a Dremel or something like that um, I use a Dremel now um, and I've actually um, I'll just bring it up and let you have a look at it on my Dremel I fitted one of these um, flexi drive shafts with a holder on the end and it's a, it's a lot easier um, holding this part than trying to hold the um, the actual Dremel motor itself. It tends to be a little bit sort of top heavy when you're trying to cut anything or drill anything you've got the sort of weight of the motor part in your hand and it tends to it's not easy to um, to cut out or drill straight which is uh, as I say which is why I got the flexi shaft. Right I'll just see if this is hot enough yet it shouldn't be long It's just about there. Right, so what I'm going to do first of all is, I'll just move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. As I say, there's two, we've got two yellow wires here, and we've got the two green or blue wires, whatever colour you care to call them, and then we've got the other two yellow wires here. Now all we need to do is, as I say, is just join one of the wires, as I say, I used to join both the wires together with a little bit of heat shrink tubing, but it's, it, it's a little bit time saving if you just do it this way. And plus, the way I did it, the, um, the wires were still hanging underneath, um, which I was a little bit worried in case they got fouled in the motor or anything like that. So doing it this way will be a little bit better. So what we're going to do first is we're going to remove one of the yellow wires, which I'll just get the soldering iron on and just soften the solder. And there's one of the wires off there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to attach that wire there, but obviously it's a little bit too long there. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll cut a little bit of it off. Keep the wire by the way, don't throw the bits of wire away because they can, uh, they can come in really useful if uh, you're doing any work on any of your logos and you happen to um, break a little bit of wire. Now you'll have to excuse me for bearing the wires this, is, this way, this is the way I've always done it. Um, not very safe I know but uh, as I say this is the way I've always done it. Right, so all we need to do now is simply solder this wire onto that contact. We'll get a little bit of solder. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to sort of keep my hand out of the way. Just give that a couple of seconds. There we go. That's that one on there. So we've got these two connected together now. And what we need to do now is we need to contact the two um, blue ones together. Which is very easily done. Again, as I say, we don't need both the wires. So we'll disconnect one of them. Just simply just soften the solder up and just pull it out like that. And there we are. Cut this one to length. And what we can do with this one is, is just simply loop it over the top there. As you can see when it's joined in there, it's not going to interfere with anything else. So we'll just make sure we leave it long enough. Which I have just. Again. We'll just bear some of the wire off. And just twist the ends a little bit. As I said, I'm sorry if my hands uh, go in the way. It's just trying to uh, do this and sort of keep things in focus at the same time is a little bit difficult. few seconds which it doesn't quite took there hmm. doesn't want to solder on for some reason I 
that's it there that's it on a little bit better there now I'll tidy that up in a second right so what we've done is as I say we've um, we've connected these two contacts together here which was one of the two yellow wires so we we'll just need to do the same on the other side here which we'll go ahead and do now we've got the blue one on here or green whichever way you look at it that's quite safe there so we'll just go ahead and just remove one of these yellow wires again with a soldering iron just soften up the solder pull the wire out there we go and we'll cut this one to length as I say it's not the ideal way to photo uh, bare wires using a modeling knife but it's just it's just the way that I'm used to doing it I think I've gone past the stage where I cut my fingers regularly now and just sort of bend that in it's a little bit fiddly doing this but uh, the more you do it the easier it does become and the quicker you can get through it as well there we go that's that one on as well so what we've done up there now is as I say we've connected we've reconnected the uh, the switch wires up together rather than using heat shrink tube and we've just used the uh, the wires themselves and just connected them up again and looped the green one over the top there you can see you can make out there there's the um, the contacts there for the um, the chassis speaker connections to connect to the printed circuit board but we don't need to worry about those for now Right, as I was saying in one of my other videos, it's probably not necessary for to fit the plastic caps back onto these contacts anymore because as you can clearly see there, they're not going to interfere with anything, they can't short out in any way, so to be honest I will just leave them off and I have left them off on other logos as well. Right, one thing I want to do is, is to just check the two wires that go down to the motor, um, just to make sure that these are still attached there, you can see the brown one there, and if I turn it over you can see the yellow one there, and they're still fine. And I can see by looking underneath the printed circuit board there that they're still attached to the printed circuit board as well. So that's that's fine. Yep, everything looks in order there. Right. I'll just go ahead and just tighten up these two, um, these three screws again, sorry. Because we're finished with that now, we can tighten that back up. Right, what we need to do now is we need to think about cutting out the material from the um, the fuel tanks. I'll just move some of this stuff to one side to give myself a bit of room. Right, and just unplug the soldering iron for now. Right, as I was saying, um, I used to use a razor saw. I tried to use a razor saw for cutting out the material from the uh, the fuel tank set, and I didn't find it very easy. So I spent a little bit of money and bought a Dremel with a flexi shaft, which is what I'm going to use for to do this. Um, and I'll just get the uh, the Dremel up, and you can have a look at it. Um, the attachment that I've got on the Dremel, um, this, this this cutting disc here that you can see, this is a, um, an attachment from my um, radio control model helicopter days um, when I used to build and fly those. Um, this disc, I've had this disc for quite a few years now um, and I've cut through um, aluminium tube and steel tube and um, brass sheets and all kinds with it, fiberglass. Um, all kinds um, and it's, it's it's barely worn at all so it's well worth getting one of them I think it was only about three pounds or something like that um, and I think it's a lot safer to use than the brown carbon ones um, well I'm saying carbon I don't know if they are carbon but they're like brown in colour um, I've used those in the past and they tend to just shatter um, which is quite uh, can be quite dangerous because you get bits flying off everywhere but that never happens with this one anyway right what I'll do is I'll start the, the Dremel um, and we'll what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cut all the way around the edge but I'm going to be in like a millimetre or so all the way around just I'm not going to go past this chamfered part of the fuel tank there so I'll just make a start cutting this now just need a bit more speed on that
Now cutting this um, cutting this material out on the bottom of the fuel tanks is going to take a little bit of time so what I'll do is I'll um, switch the camera off for now and I'll go ahead and I'll just cut it out um, and come back to you but what I'm doing is you can see the cut that I've already made there now I'm just making the same cut all the way around there until I can get the uh, get this part of the material removed but anyway I'll come back to you in a few minutes with this cut out hopefully right as you can see we've now got the bottom of the fuel tanks cut out um, and what we need to do now is, is just to go ahead and remove these center bits, these side bits in here rather. I don't know if you can pick them out there on the camera. You've got one at that side and you've got one at this side as well. These need to come out. Um, I'll show you why. Obviously if you try and put the speaker in as it is there, it'll not, it'll not fit into place because, the, uh, the, the, um, because of these two side bits here. So we need to take them down with the Dremel, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, so I'll just get the Dremel in position. What I'm going to use this time, I'm not going to use this cutting disc for to remove the side bits. I'm going to change the end over to um, this small drum sander here, and this will take the um, that'll take the plastic down a lot better. Um, it'll be a bit quicker as well. So we'll go ahead and start the Dremel, and we'll get that plastic removed now. I just want to say at this point, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying not to remove all the plastic there from the side simply because you've got a little bit of tank detail there at the side and it would be a shame to lose that. However, if that does happen, what you can do is when you fix your uh, base speaker in place, you could simply glue, um, which I've done before, some strip styrene. Um, you can use the strip styrene profiles and just make up the detail again and just attach it with a little bit of glue on the side of the, um, the speaker. It doesn't really matter because it's unlikely you're going to remove the speaker again anyway. So we'll just carry on with this other side piece anyway. just when you're busy doing this take the material out a little bit at a time don't try and take it out all in one go um, you know and keep sort of um, trying the speaker in place to see if it'll go in which you can see there we're just about there now um, we've just got a little bit more to come off uh, yeah we've got a little bit more to take off uh, the thing with these um, 8 ohm speakers is they're um, they're a little bit deeper than the 100 ohm speakers and what happens with these is um, when you've got the speaker in place you can see it's sort of just sticking out from the bottom of the fuel tanks um, there's not really much you can do about that you can try to sand the back of the speaker which you may be able to take a millimeter or so off there but there's always the risk of um, going through going through the back of the body there which I think would probably um, take away a lot of the effect of the speaker if not render the speaker useless to be honest with you but um, as I say it only you only have like a couple of millimeters sticking out of the bottom there but by the time you weather your logo you can't see the speaker anyway so that's not too bad anyway but uh, anyway we'll go ahead and carry on with this Again we'll try it in place to see if the speaker will fit now. All these loose bits of plastic that come off with the Dremel you can just you can more or less get them off with your fingernail. They come off quite easy. Alright that's still a little bit tight. Very slightly. It's just trial and error with this. You've just got to take it down bit by bit until you get it, uh, get the speaker to fit in. Which will take a bit more off. The 
remember when you do this, um, when you've got the speaker fitted into the chassis, all this is going to be underneath, on the underside of the uh, the logo anyway, so you do need to worry about making the hole nice and nice and neat on the bottom. The uh, Obviously the main objective is just to get the speaker to fit into place, which it's, it's getting there slowly. Uh, it still needs a little bit more off yet, I'm just trying to work out where it needs to come off. Yeah, it needs to come off round about this end here. There's a little bit of a lip there, I don't know if you can see that, just going onto the speaker and we need to get that bit out. So I might take this little bit out here with the uh, with the drum sand on the Dremel and then just square that corner up a little bit uh, with a small file. I think that'll be the best bet. Right, we'll try we'll try a small file in that corner now just to uh, tidy that up. it's just about there still a little bit more needs to come off so we'll just get in with the file um, I'll use a different file here if you can always try and use a file that's got the um, the safety edge on there on one side otherwise when you're trying to file the plastic you'll be getting a nice clean cut on one side but you'll be also cutting into the other side of the plastic which is not what you want I hope you can pick up what I'm doing here. I'm trying not to get uh, trying not to get my hand in the road in the way too much to spoil your view of what I'm doing. Right, and I think we'll do this corner as well here while we're on. It's a little bit um, a little bit raggy edged. There we go. Give a little bit of a clean up. Alright, we'll try the speaker in again. Try it in from the bottom this time, see if it'll go in. Just about there now, it's going in there now. Um, it's just slightly I don't know if you made it out there when I put the speaker in. It's just slightly pushing the fuel tanks out of shape. So it obviously there's a little bit more needs to come off and I'm just trying to work out where it needs to come out from. Which is going to be yeah, pretty much along that side. It's just a case of just keep going like this until you get the whole the um, the speaker to fit in nice and squarely or as squarely as you can get it as I say it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be underneath the logo anyway so you'll not see this yep I think we can pretty much get away with that as it is. That should be okay there. Like I was saying, um, when the speaker's in place, you'll probably have maybe about that amount visible sticking out the bottom of the fuel tank. Um, as I say, you can sand the back of the speaker if you want to, but you run the risk of going right through the plastic, as I said. Um, but by the time the um, by the time you get your tanks and your chassis weathered and everything, you'll not see that part of the speaker at all. Um, I've already, there's a couple of my class 37s like this already, um, and you can't see the speaker at all with the weather chassis, it looks okay. Right, okay, so we've got the um, we've got the speaker fitting into the hole now. So what we need to do now is, and I'll just move this drummel out the way. What we need to do now is we need to think about getting the um, getting the main part of the chassis back on. 
um, because the uh, we need to fix this back onto here and then fit the chassis, the uh, the base speaker from the underside and bring the wires out through the side there. Obviously because it hangs down. Some of the other speakers um, they tend to sit flush. The uh, I think it was the um, the hundred ohm speakers fit flush with the top here, um, which means you could put the speaker in from the inside and then fix this whole assembly up onto there. But with these ones having to stick down a little bit on the bottom, you can't do that. Uh, before we uh, fit that, it might be worth just getting a cloth and just clean out any raggy bits of plastic that might be left inside there. Um, we don't want anything getting attracted into the motor, which would, which would cause all kinds of problems with that. So that looks pretty clean there. So I think we can go ahead and start and fit the, uh, the chassis back on. What I said earlier about um, this, this section only going on one way. If you have a look at the um, if you have a look at the top bits here, these sort of like plastic sleeves what fit into the metal part here. You can see you can clearly see that they're two different sizes, so that this can only be fitted onto the chassis onto the metal part of the chassis one way. So we we'll just work out which side is which, and I think it's that way. So we'll just sort of offer that up like that, and just get the little plastic sleeves in place. And then we'll get our screws back, which is four of these. There's a little bit of raggy plastic on there. As I say, you can just get that off with your fingernail when you're, when you're finished sorting it out, just to neaten it up a little bit. That can be done later on. Right, we'll get the screws in. Four crosshead screws. There's one. What I tend to do is when I'm putting things back together like this, I'm always going over what I've done in my mind in case um, in case I've missed something out. But usually, if uh, as I say, when you do this for the first time, if you make like a little bit of a list of everything that you have to do, you can normally get it done okay without. Forgetting too much anyway. As I say, I had a few mistakes um, when I first started to do these. My first one was a little bit of a disaster. I got the job done in the end, but as I said, I was taking stuff off that I didn't need to, and then stuff that I should have took off I had left on, which sort of slowed the whole job down a little bit. Uh, but it's it's a lot better now. You get used to doing it, and as I say, each time you do it, depending on how many, how, how many logos you've got to do, you know, you get a little bit quicker each time you do it. Right, that's the plastic chassis bit back in place there, as you can see. That's back on, we've got the hole cut in the middle. As I say, we need to fit the um, the base speaker from the underside. Um, and the way that we do that is, find out um, which side the connections is going to be on. You can see the, uh, the solder connections there on the printed circuit board for the speakers. So I always take the wire so it gets comes out nearer to those as possible. Having said that, the base speaker doesn't get soldered to these connections here. It gets soldered to the back of the um, the chassis speaker here. The chassis speaker itself gets soldered to these, and then the base speaker gets soldered onto the back of them there. Okay. So we'll just go and make a start and just push the, just twist those wires around a little bit. And just simply bring the wires out there through the side there. You can see them out there, and just push the speaker into place. Hopefully it'll go in without too much trouble, which it has. Just double check that when you put the speaker in, you haven't got the wires nipped, which I can I can see them there. They look okay there. I'm pretty sure that that's okay there. Which is there, and you can see the speaker. The speaker's now in place there. As I say, there's that little bit. You can see the little bit of the lip there where the speaker's coming out the bottom. As I say, there's nothing really much you can do about that. Um, unless you're prepared to, uh, to file the back of the speaker to make it sit flush with the bottom of the tanks. But you, um, you run the risk of ruining the speaker. Personally, I would just leave it like that. As I said, by the time all this area is weathered, you won't see that. And if you can, I uh, don't know if you can just manage to notice there, we've been able to leave that little bit of side detail intact in between the tanks as well, by not going too far down on the inside at the sides there. Right. So that's the speaker in place, you can see the wires there. So now we need to think about just holding the speaker in place. Um, and that's done quite simply with just a little bit of blue tack or anything like that that you've got. You just tear off a little bit, it doesn't take much. What I used to do with these was, um, 
when I used to fit these bass reflex speakers, I used to use, um, I used to try and glue them in place. And then if ever the time came when they needed to come out again, of course you had a, you always had a, a bit of a job to get the speaker back out again because of the glue. So you just push it in like that. Just so far along, you don't even have to go right the way along to the other end. Just get it, just get it as close to the way you want it as possible. Remember to push the blue tack well in because you don't want to see the blue tack hanging from underneath. And then I'll normally just get a little screwdriver and just pack it in like that. And just push it into place like that. And if you've got any excess you can just trim that off with your modelling knife. You can just pull it off like that, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. It takes a few minutes but you get there eventually. Remember the uh, the bass reflex speaker itself. There isn't any weight to that at all, so it's not um, it's not going to drop out anyway. You probably could um, fit the bass reflex speaker and just leave it without any blue tack. But I always like to just put a little bit in, just as a little bit of added security, just in case, because you never know. So that's one side done anyway. So we'll just go ahead and probably get away with this a little bit and just do the other side, the other end rather. Same thing again. Just push it into place like that and then just get a, a screwdriver, a small screwdriver and just pack it in there like that. Just push it into place. You can see it comes out at the sides there. As I say, when you get when you've got your speaker fitted into place, you can you can just double check to make sure that you know you can't see the blue tack hanging down anywhere. I've just quickly done this quickly just for the purposes of the video, but that's the uh, that's the speaker in place there anyway. So you get a little bit of blue tack that you haven't used. And just put that back. Right. Next thing we want to do is we want to be thinking about getting it soldered up to the uh, to the printed circuit board now. As I said at the beginning of the video, I was only concentrating really on fitting the bass reflex speaker um, as, because as you've seen, it's a little bit more of an involved job. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to solder the chassis speaker in place, um, which is this one here. Now the chassis speaker normally sits round about here on the chassis. And again you just fix that in place with a little bit of blue tack at the sides there. You can just make like a sort of a, a little blue tack edge all the way around and the speaker just simply pushes into the blue tack. When you put that speaker into the blue tack, it's important to make sure that you don't get anything touching the back of the speaker at all. You only want the blue tack on this thin silver edge here, and the same at the uh, same at each end. Okay, so what we'll do there is we'll we'll just leave that there for now, and we'll get the soldering iron going, um, and we'll get this soldered into place. Now, if it, it pays you to just double check. Um, Sometimes the, the contacts in here is marked positive and negative and sometimes they're not. And I had a look at this one um, and there's no markings on this one at all. So it will not really make any difference which way you attach the speaker. But what you need to do is you need to make sure that the base the, the, um, the red wire is connected to the red wire on the chassis speaker. You don't want them crossed over. So we'll go ahead and get them soldered on there now. And we'll do the red one first. which is the red one on and then we'll go ahead and get the black one on which is there so we've got we've got both your speaker wires on there now for the chassis speaker and what we need to do now is we'll just need to go ahead and solder the base reflex speaker onto the back of the chassis speaker which we'll do now And just pull those wires apart a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit awkward to um, to get the the wires to solder onto the back of these speakers simply because when you're trying to solder it on because you've only got two hands the uh, the speaker tends to move around a little bit on the chassis so what I normally do is I normally get the weight that we took out of the um, the bottom of the chassis and just sort of sit it on the top there if you can get it to sit on and then it just sort of holds the speaker in place a little bit better for you. 
So I'm just going to get a little bit of solder. And then we'll attach the red wire. Red wire to the red wire on the back of the chassis speaker. Which there it is there. And then we'll just simply do the same with the black wire. Which I've took that weight off because I can, I can manage a little bit better here. Give that a couple of seconds. Okay. So now you can see we've got we've got the uh, the base reflex speaker is now soldered up to the back here. We've got the the two black wires together. You can see the other one just there. And we've got the two red wires here. So as I say, what we do now is we just simply turn the speaker over. As I say, make a little bit of a um, a blue tack sort of like platform there for it to sit on at the edges, and just that simply pushes back into, into place there. Being careful not to get any blue tack on the back of the speaker. So if we haven't that done, what we need to do now is just solder the um, the lights, the light um, connections back up for the speaker, which is the ones that we took off at the beginning of the video, if you remember. So we'll just go ahead and solder these back on. This is a little bit awkward to do sometimes because they're, they're, they're very sort of fine wires um, and they're hard to get. They can be a little bit difficult to get on. There's the yellow one on. And there's the red one on. And lastly we've got the brown one to put on. And there we go. There's the three wires on at that end. And then we'll just flip it around and do the same for this one. Starting off with the yellow wire. Secondly, the red wire. And lastly, the brown wire. So there we go. There's the um, there's the three wires back on in place for the directional lights. Now because we um, we made these little jumpers before um, when we were first busy soldering the wires back onto the print circuit board, the uh, the directional lights will now work correctly as they did before, but obviously without the switches on the bottom because we couldn't use those anymore with fitting the um, the fuel tank in place. So the only thing to do now is, as I say, there's two, two, mainly two things left to do, well three things left to do, is we need to get the bogies back into place, which we're going to do now. Um, to do that, as I say, I always make sure that the bogies go back on, try and make everything go back together the way it came apart, and then that way you know everything's okay. What I'm going to do is just, um, while we're busy, um, I just need to get a little bit of tape. just want to get a little bit of low tack masking tape um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that it's just to um, put a little tape a little bit of tape over that speaker just to sort of keep it in place to stop it wobbling around because we don't want it um, putting any tension on any of the wires or anything like that we'll just put that over there like that that'll do well, just to hold that in place right as I was saying we want the bogies back on now um, if you remember at the beginning of the video I made that little bit of a mark on the end of the tape there and I put a little bit of masking tape on this bogey here which told me that obviously this is the bogey that goes on this side as I was saying at the uh, at the beginning of the video the red wires fitted to this side of the printed circuit board and the black wires fitted to the other side so obviously I wanted to get those back the way that they came off right first of all we'll get the um, hopefully again you can see what I'm doing here I hope you can um, thread the black wire through there which sometimes they take a little bit of starting because of the solder on the ends there's the black one I'll just straighten the wire a little bit might help um, a little bit fiddly these sometimes it takes a couple of attempts to get the wires through all right and there's the red one through so we'll just carefully grab the wire 
and just pull that into place like that. What you can do first is, it depends which way you want to do this, you can either solder the wires on first or you can um, you can put the drive shaft into place. What I tend to do is I tend to solder the wires on first and then I know that they're, um, that they're fixed on in place and they're okay. Now what you can do here is, um, originally the wires went through the underside of the printed circuit board if you remember and were just sort of looped onto the tag there um, and they were fixed in place with these little plastic clips. Um, well, as I was saying, what I decided to do was I decided to make them more a, perm a more a permanent connection by soldering them in place, soldering them in place rather. So what you can do here is rather than try and get the uh, try and get the wire back through the hole, is just simply solder them to the top and then just push them under the printed circuit board, which is what I'm going to do with this one. Just saves a little bit of work. All right, that's the red one on there. Yeah. Well, I thought it was. It's obviously popped back off again. I just need to put a little bit of solder on. There we go. That's the red one on there now. Now we'll just go ahead and do the same with the black one. Okay, there's the black one on. Right, so what we do now is we can go ahead and fit the drive shaft into place. These can be a little bit fiddly to get into place. What you tend to have to do is you have to sort of hold it up to the light until um, you can see the ends on the drive shaft and sort of try and engage it into the into the motor there, which once you can get it sort of set like that, you can do that. Okay, so that's that bogey attached there now. What we need to do now is to put the screw into place, just to hold it in position. When you're doing something like this where there's quite a bit of dismantling involved, um, when you come to reassemble it, it's sort of, it's quite a nice feeling as you're getting closer to getting it built back up again, uh, because you know, you're, more or less every screw that you're putting in, you, it's, it's nearing the uh, near and completion the job. So that's that bogey in, so we'll go ahead and we'll get the other bogey back in. Now because of the way that we um, mark the chassis and the bogey, we know that the wires is going back into the same place. The black wires is on you know, the correct side and the, the red wires is also. So again, you need to feed the wire through, get the wire through the hole there, which there's the black one through, we'll just pull that through a little bit. And now we'll get the red wire. I'm just trying to get that through. I think that's the way through there now. Yeah. As I said, um, at the when I first when I done very first fitted the base reflex speed into a Batman class 37, um, what I tried to do was I loosened the bogies like this. Um, obviously, they were still connected to the printed circuit board, and I sort of had the bogies hanging by the wires, and I just sort of dropped this subframe section down. And try to cut it out with the, to cut the plastic out with the Dremel, with the bogies hanging by the wires, which I did. It took a little bit of a, uh, it took a while to do it. It took longer to do it that way than what it did the way I've done it um, on this video. Um, but of course, by the time I had finished, there was one or two of the wires had broken off from the solder there and the bogies, so they required soldering back on again. So I thought, well, the next time I do one of these, um, I'll do it the way I've done this one, where I'll detach the wires from the printed circuit board and it'll make things a lot easier then, you haven't got anything hanging by the wires, you know, and causing possible damage. Right, again, so what we'll do is, we'll just sit that on the top there, and we'll get the wires, and we're going to solder these to the, uh, the printed circuit board, which is the ones up at this end here. I'll just try and move the wires out the way so we can see what I'm doing. Again, I'm just going to just add a little bit more solder onto there. Could do a little bit more on, I think, just to make it a little bit easier to attach the wires. And I'll do that side as well while I'm on. There we go. 
go. Take the black wire. For some reason, these um, the bogey wires they take a little bit of soldering on. Um, I don't understand what's going on with them. That's it on there anyway. That's that one on. I just need to pull the red wire through a little bit more. I'm not quite good enough on the length of the wire. That's it there. Just put a little bit more solder onto that tag. I think. Maybe it's the, uh, the tip of the soldering iron needs cleaning a little bit, I don't know. Just hold that in place there while the solder goes off. It's going there now. There we go, there's the chassis wires. Sorry, the other bogey wires fitted on there now. So that's um, that's the bogies in place. The only thing we've got left to do with this one now is the same as what we did on the other one, and is that that's get the drive shaft, the ends of the drive shaft into place, which is in there now. Fix the bogie in place, and then we just need to put the other screw in. I'll just unplug the soldering iron there. So by the time you get this done, by the time you finish the job, um, you should only, by rights only be left with two screws. And those are the two screws that go into the um, the diagonal corners of the fuel tanks, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, we tend not to put these screws back in. You've got one there and you've got one that goes in there. Just in case that there's any um, wiring gets snipped or damaged is when you put the body back on. So we we'll only work with the, uh, only refit the two end screws in each, in each end of the chassis. Right, so that's the bogies back on. Um, the only other thing we need to do is to refit on is going to be the um, the decoder, which we'll put back on now. Um, obviously, it's a 21 pin decoder, as you can see by the amount of pins. I'm just going to put my little bit of insulating tape back on there, just for the uh, decoder back in place, and just carefully get the decoder and just sort of line it up. You can feel when it lines up with the holes. I usually can anyway. Um, I'm just seeing if I'm putting this on the right way around because I have, I have been known to fit them the wrong way around, um, and I can see straight away what's the matter there. Yeah, there's one of the pins is bent. I must have caught it with something, so I've just got to very carefully try and pull the pin back out again. Try and get it lined up. There we are. That's it. There. Always trying. A good idea. To think, a good thing to do actually. What, which, what I should have done was. Um, when I removed the decoder, I should have put the blank and plug back on and that would have protected the pins. Then I wouldn't have to worry about any of the pins being um, slightly bent like what happened with that one. Right, as you can see here, we've got these contacts on here. Um, now, we haven't, we haven't refitted the plastic caps on the ends, but you can see quite easily there that the wires, you know, there isn't going to be any shorts. They're not going to touch anything. Um, when I bared the wires to solder them back onto these tags, I made sure that they were sufficiently short enough that they couldn't touch anything else. Um, so they, they'll be okay. So what you need to do now is, um, the job's as good as finished really, um, which I'll not go any further with this, um, I've probably be bored you enough with this now, but uh, the only thing you need to do now is, is to tidy up all the wires. Um, I've actually soldered that red wire on in the wrong place, uh, that should have been coming out the other side, which I'll um, I'll sort that out in a minute um, and, and do that. But as I say, the only thing you need to do now is, is to tidy up all the wires, get the chassis speaker fixed into place and then um, just refit the logo body and that's the job finished. So um, I hope the video might have been of some help to you if you're contemplating doing this job. Um, you might get a few pointers from it, I hope so. So thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, bye.